What's up, guys? I'm professional NHRA drag racer Leah Pritchett for Don Schumacher Racing, and I make my living driving one of these. It's called a Top Fuel Dragster, and they say it's the quickest accelerating racing vehicle in the world. We're talking 10,000 horsepower. We're talking zero miles per hour to 300 miles per hour in just over three seconds. Are there opportunities for disaster when you're trying to control a ferocious beast like this? Of course there are opportunities for disaster. Maybe what I do should scare me to death, but it doesn't. You know what scares me? This is what scares me. And this. And this. I don't get it. This rough, tough drag racer who goes 300 miles per hour is afraid of a little water going over a dam. I just don't get it. Hi, my name's Nicole and I'm 24 years old. And my name is Patty and I'm 27. And I would consider us both to be pretty experienced kayakers. And I don't know what the big deal is about a little water going over a dam. I mean, look at these dams, they're picturesque. They're so pretty, so scenic. What's so scary about that? I don't think it's the pretty scenery that is bothering our rough, tough drag racer. I think it's the fact that dead bodies keep showing up at the face of the dams. There's dead swimmers, dead fishermen, dead canoers and kayakers. Men, women, and children, people just like you and I that were out having a good time, they got too close to the face of the dam, and that was it. One of the phrases that I've often heard used to refer to these structures is drowning machines. And they don't call them drowning machines for no reason. They are notorious wherever they have been. I've seen information throughout the country of the hundreds and hundreds of deaths at these sort of structures nationwide. Their official name is Lowhead Dams, but I agree, they're really drowning machines. Low head dams frequently don't look dangerous. Not only do these not look dangerous, but they kind of look inviting. That makes them all the deadlier because they do look inviting. How can you not like watching the water cascade over the front of a dam? It's, it's mesmerizing. You're having fun, you're enjoying yourself. You're out drifting in your kayak. You get a little too close to the dam, it sucks you in, pushes you under. Now you're stuck and you're the next victim. The average age of people that are losing their lives at these structures is 20 and a half years old. What makes these low head dams so deadly is the hydraulic jump that occurs as the water breaks over the surface of the dam, drops down, and it develops a gyre, a, a spinning like a washing machine at the bottom of that, a circulating current. And so people that get in it, they start getting circulated, we call it, where they get pressed down from the water coming over the face of the dam down to the bottom. It pushes them along the bottom, pops them back up with those air bubbles, and then slams them back into the face of the dam again, and they can't get out of it. You know all about the power of water going over a dam. I do. Uh, it's very powerful. It's like, um, like a wash, being caught in a washing machine. It just takes you down under, and by the time you come up, you just have a few seconds to breathe, and it brings you right back down again. Uh, it's so powerful, it, can, it just can whip your clothes right off of you. You're a kayaker, right? Yes. And you'd say you're an experienced kayaker, you know what you're doing? Yeah, I would say so, but that's not always enough. Um, I was in a situation where I planned on portaging around a low head dam and moving around to the other side. And I got caught up into the current, which I miscalculated and ended up going over the dam. You weren't kayaking alone that day, were you? No, I wasn't. I was with somebody else, and 
we both went over the dam and we both got thrown out of our kayaks and he went under too. So what happened to the other kayaker? Well, he got caught up in the hydraulics just like me and he went under and um, he, did, he didn't make it. So you've compiled the large list of all these people who have died at these dams, right? I have. And you know what? The list keeps getting longer. There's Sean Hebel, age 24, Hosey Dam on the Maumee River in Fort Wayne. Ricky Lee Harvey, age 13. Stephen Duke, age 19. Alyssa Knight, age 16. All at Milltown Dam on the Blue River at Milltown. Van Polen, age 15. Rothrock Dam at the Blue River near Croydon. Donald Stone, age 11. Richard A. Ricky Bailey, age 10. Katsu Teddy Yao, age 17. Corey Mitchell, age 20. All at the Emmerichsville Dam on White River in Indianapolis. Michael Dye, age 11. Westfield Boulevard Dam on the White River in Indianapolis. Tyler Jackson, age 21. Markle Mill Dam on Otter Creek in Terre Haute. Michael Chadburn, age 16. Jason Moran, age 17. Edinburgh Dam on the Big Blue River at Edinburgh. The drownings at Edinburgh are a good example of the type of tragedy that can occur at, at a low head dam. Five children swimming in the upstream area above the dam that they thought was nice and calm. But as they got pulled down, one of them, young woman, got pulled over. And then her friends tried to rescue her. Two of them killed, one of them severely injured. The unfortunate thing for these young people is I don't believe they understood the dangers they were getting into with the low head dam and the, and the hydraulics of that. There's times when the water can be low and a person could actually go out and wait around in the face of a low head dam with very little risk. However, if there's rain upstream from the dam, you might not even see it. That can change the whole dynamic. I've had three experiences as a law enforcement officer where I've had to respond to drowning people caught in these. And one of those experiences, the people were actually there the day before enjoying their day. Everybody was safe, everybody went home, everybody had a fun day because of the rain overnight. They come and they participate in the same activity, and they have no, no idea that they are now jumping into a keeper hydraulic. A keeper hydraulic is when the water keeps you. It traps you and it won't let you go. So the best thing to do, no matter what the weather is, no matter whether it's high water, low water, it doesn't matter what the water levels are, stay away from low head dams. That's the only way you can be sure it won't kill you. One of the questions we get asked sometimes, if, if these dams are so dangerous, why were they even built? Seems like a pretty good question. If these dams are so dangerous, then why were they built in the first place? It is a good question. These dams were built before we were really recreating on the water, before we had time to be enjoying the water for pleasure. These dams were built primarily to harness the power of the water, to drive wheels, to grind our grain. The water would power sawmills. Uh, eventually, they would power electricity. They were across every county. They were across the country. And now they're a threat. Now they are a hazard. They just sit on the landscape. People are attracted to them. And meanwhile, the body count just keeps going up. So there's nothing we can do about this? There is. We can remove the dams, or we can modify them through placement of stones in front of them to create ramps. We can also put stair steps in them so that they don't form that killer hydraulic. Uh, this is Tuesday, 1st of November, 2016. And in the next few days, the low head dam at Mexico, Indiana in the Eel River is coming out. Once the dam is removed, the ecology of the stream will be restored and the chance of someone losing their life at this dam
goes away. You know, the sad thing is, there's so many of these low head dams, these drowning machines out there all over the country. And even if we worked night and day, I just think it would take forever. Even if we had all the money in the world, we couldn't get all the drowning machines out of our rivers. They're everywhere. So what is it you're saying? We shouldn't go swimming, fishing, or kayaking? The waters are too dangerous to be on? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. As a matter of fact, um, all I want is for people to be educated about the dangers of the low head dams so that they can safely recreate on the water and have a great time, but just familiarize yourself with where the dams are and stay clear of them. You can find out a lot of information online about how you can be safe on the water. Okay, water safety 101. If you're on the water and you're anywhere near the water, please, please, please always wear a PFD, which is another word for a life jacket. I know they can get hot, I know they can get awkward, and they're not the most stylish things in the world, but they will save your life. You need to always be aware of the weather conditions. You need to be aware of the body of water that you're on. Where are the risks? Where are the hazards? What is the current doing at the current time? It's important that you know your surroundings. Watch for warning signs. The trouble is a lot of times dams are invisible when you're on the water. They're right at the same level as you and you may not see them. So use all your senses. Make sure that you're listening. A lot of times you'll hear the water cascading over dam before you ever see it. If you're on the river and there's a dam up ahead, get off of the river, portage around the dam, take your canoe and your kayak, and walk along the shoreline until you get to the safe water down below the dam. Do not, and I repeat, do not ever play anywhere around a dam, on a dam, or even near a dam. They're all very dangerous. Finally, spread the word. Get the word out there because not everybody's going to be seeing the video. Make sure that people understand the dynamics of the river and what safety considerations need to be uh, put into your plans before you go out and recreate on the rivers. You gotta be aware of a lot of things when you're getting out here. Just the dams are the biggest thing because you get caught in that, you're not getting out. It's important that you share the information with people. You know, if you know other people that are going on the rivers or thinking about it, make sure they know because uh, I don't want to see anybody else on the news. From the moment I first hit the throttle in a junior dragster, back when I was just eight years old, I only had one ambition, and that was to be a champion. I love a challenge, whether I'm wake surfing, wakeboarding, snowboarding, riding motocross, whatever it is, but I don't take chances. They say life is like a series of choices for all of us. Choose to become a champion. Give a damn. Give a damn all the distance you can. Don't give a damn. Don't give a damn. Your friends. Be a champion and learn about safety at dams. Then pass what you learned on to your friends. Don't give a damn. your life.